When news breaks, there's no doubt you'll see me overhead. From high-speed chases to raging fires, I cover it all. But what makes the ride so enjoyable? My amazing coworkers who are always entertaining with just a hint of attitude. Go to the dark side. <laughs> or the good side. Living the dream, baby. You're kidding me, all of this for a water bottle? Hold on, I'll get you up in a second. was king of the wild blue sky. Back in those years, there was no regulations, there was no rules, and there was, it was just a whole different thing. And captivated a worldwide audience with his daring air rescues. We'd get to a scene and we'd get the people that were hurt, and get them in the back of the helicopter, or we'd rush them to the hospital. It's been more than 15 years since pilot reporter Jerry Foster worked the controls of a helicopter, but with more than 23,000 hours, flying is still second nature. Claire! Oh man, I tell you. You know, I could start this engine right now and take off right now, and I haven't flown a helicopter in 15 years. As a kid working in a mining operation, Foster saw firsthand how useful a helicopter could be in chartering unknown terrain. He vividly remembers his first flight in the early 60s. And then the pilot took me out and showed me how it would fly, forward, sideways, backwards, straight up, straight down. I was hooked, that was just it. His career would span over 30 years, working for three different television stations in Phoenix, Arizona, a career that began as a young pilot hired to report local traffic conditions. Foster devoted his life to his helicopter and would eventually make aviation history. Dwayne Brady from Channel 12, who was the anchor man, called me out on a search one day and there was no helicopters available, but I was the only helicopter in town. And we went out and found a grandma and two little children dead in the desert from exposure. And uh, that was really the beginning of, of my air rescue stuff. And These dramatic air rescues were more like Hollywood blockbuster movies, prompting chopper wars among the stations. Back in my days, we didn't love each other. It was competition. You know, I kept that helicopter at home for 20 years. And every time a call came out, I could be in it in five minutes and I could be at that scene for even the fire department. Jerry was never more than 20 minutes away from his helicopter. His personal mission to be first on the scene put him in the middle of the action with rescue crews and saved so many lives. Today she's a mother of two and it, it's a wonderful feeling, a feeling that you never lose. Jerry is talking about a rescue in the Verde River above Roosevelt Lake where a group of U of A students had gone over a diversion dam. And when the blasts went over, they got caught in that burble. And uh, the DPS was there, and they didn't have enough power to do the job. So uh, one of their paramedics got on my skid. And uh, the, the girl came out of the boat. And when she did, she went underwater. But <clears throat> I got the helicopter down in the water, and Clarence was on my skid down there. And he grabbed her, and we got her over to the bank. And uh, she wasn't breathing. We got her breathing again. Unfortunately, he couldn't save everyone. The ones that you couldn't save just uh, took you down in a bog until you got the next one that you could save, somebody that you could help. His countless rescues helped him become one of the most recognizable TV personalities in the country and was awarded the highest civilian honor in aviation, the Harmon Trophy. Uh, I had complete control of the helicopter and I could be there at a scene and I lived at my ranch for 20 years and kept the helicopter there. I could be in the air in five minutes and on the scene and quick. Jerry Foster was part of so many firsts in aviation, search and rescue, helicopter technology and broadcast news. He was the first to broadcast live from a chopper and he helped transform the industry into what it is today. Well, you can see firefighters there uh, looking for several hikers who got themselves into trouble. Apparently a boulder slipped and it fell on them. I watched a, a shot you guys did the other day. It must have been three or 4,000 feet, and it was steady as a rock. You know, we, where our, we had this little camera hanging down, or I had a photographer hanging out the door back there, and the film was like this. And... 
But as Foster's popularity rose, so did the controversy. You, do, you have to climb some battles sometimes in your career, and I know that I was controversial, and I know that I did things that uh, I probably wouldn't do today. The pressure of long hours, daring rescues, and glaring media attention certainly took its toll. Critics spoke out about his cowboy flying style and the infamous pot scandal. Foster's career began to spiral out of control, and after a brief return to the airwaves, he eventually was let go by KTVK. It was just a terrible way to end, and if I'm on Channel 3, I always wanted to give those people a goodbye. I always wanted to say, look, I'm sorry this happened, and one of these days I'll tell you the story. You can read more of Foster's story in his own words. He's writing an autobiography called Earthbound Misfit throughout the summer. Never got trouble in the air, but I got a lot of trouble on the ground. And one of the reasons was my mouth. Learn to keep your mouth shut, Jerry, and things will be a lot better. We all learned that lesson. <laughs> Whether you love Jerry Foster or hated him, he says he's learned a lot over his 72-year journey.